What's going on? Thanks for checking in. Got the man Tim over at Mark Pro in the building today. It's gonna be a recovery-based video. And if you've been following me for a little while now, you know I'm a little old school when it comes to recovery. There's a lot of eye wash out there. So Tim's gonna come in and share why Mark Pro might trump some of these other recovery modalities. This is one you're not gonna wanna miss. Make sure you stay tuned, check this one out. My name is Tim Damaris, I'm Business Development Director for Mark Pro. So I cover a lot of our training facilities across the country, strategic partnerships, that sort of thing. But obviously here today, Heard of Summer's Methods before, figured we'd stop in. Mark Pro's been around since 2011. We're now currently used by every Major League Baseball team. Uh, every minor league team, we have 2,000 college teams in different sports. We have over 200 Major League pitchers that own Mark Pro's outside of what the team provides them. And the main reason for that is form and function. Um, we make one of the most durable devices that's out there. You have one that you've had for years. It's pretty beat up, but it still works. Um, but really the most important thing for us is function. So what we do is recover arms. We're not speeding up recovery, we're normalizing recovery. Because most baseball players are putting in so much volume that they don't have enough time in the day without some assistance to get that arm back to 100%. So essentially what we're doing is a muscle stimulator. There's a ton of stims that are out there. Unfortunately, most people will conflate them all. And you've probably seen it. People come in, oh, it's a TENS unit. Oh, I've used this at a Cairo PT, yeah. whatever. All of those different types of stim have a, have a function to them. They're just not what we do. Some are rehab, some are pain control. Mark Pro is pure recovery. Really simple to use. We stick it on the densest part of a muscle. We turn it on as high as we can without fighting it. You're gonna get a contraction. That contraction is gonna pump blood in and remove waste. You get done, your arm feels super light. Yeah, because when you think of stem, right, it's always like, hey, physical therapy, you get an injury, you go to your physical therapist and then go ahead, use the STEM unit as recovery. But you're saying this is something that they can use, you know, pre, could use every day. So most people see or hear STEM and their first assumption is injury, right? Because historically, that's our biggest hill to overcome is, oh, I use this when I'm injured. Sure, you can use it when you're injured, but our real goal is to prevent injuries. And we're gonna do that by keeping muscles in an optimized position, being able to replicate the same arm path or whatever uh, biomechanical function you need. So unfortunately, most people assume injury. What we would want to do instead is consistent usage of Mark Pro over time is going to keep that muscle in a position where it's not gonna be overstressed. It's not gonna be super tight where you tear it or you, or you do something more difficult. Mark is actually an acronym. You probably didn't know this. I didn't. All right, so Mark's not a person. There's no guy named Mark out there. Even though it's my middle name, different story. But Mark stands for Muscle Activation Recovery Cascade. Really fancy way of saying when you contract the muscle, you get some benefits, and as you use it consistently, that cascade of benefits just grows and grows. So you should be using, if you have a Mark Pro, you should use it at least once a day. You should use it after a bullpen. You should use it after a game. You should use it after a lifting session. Because you can use it on any muscle, but obviously in baseball and softball, we focus a lot on arms. Okay, cool. I think what we should do next is just show these guys and girls on here, mm -hmm. like how to use it. So we could take one of my athletes, Sierra, yeah. you know, Mark Pro partner, um, <laughs> through some typical things that could flare up in baseball or softball. So I'm thinking maybe the arm, maybe the leg, and then would it be lower back? Yeah, we definitely want to do lower back only because that's your pivot point for everything. If you're activating your hips, you're activating your lower back. We'll show you how to throw that on there. All right, let's get into it. All right, so we got Sierra here. Obviously, she's a veteran player, so she's been using Mark Pro for a long time. We're gonna show you a couple different setups. We're gonna do some leg, some arm, and some low back. So we're gonna start with legs. So we got these nice branded Mark Pro pads. These guys are gonna stick on the densest part of the muscle. So we're not looking for insertion points or anything you've ever done with stim before. We're going straight into the belly of the muscle. On a leg, we have the quad, we have a VMO and a VLO. So this VMO, often people call it the teardrop. We're gonna stick it right there on the end. The next pad, we're gonna stick right up here on the VLO. This is gonna activate our entire quad. We got this big muscle that's gonna function as a motor to move fluid in and out of that space. Super important for knees, because they're low vascular areas, so we wanna increase blood flow. And then obviously super important for just leg function in general. So all we have is we have two wires that come out of the machine. These little two plugs pop right into the end of the pads. Done. So that's our first setup. The next big thing on the leg is obviously calves. Sometimes it's referred to as the second heart because it recycles up to 90% of the blood from the feet back up to the heart. So it's super important for us to keep that, um, that blood flow really high for not just leg recovery, but entire uh, body cardiovascular health. So we're gonna stick these on either side of the calf. So the tricky things with calves sometimes is that these are large dense muscles that we walk on all the time. So when we turn this on, we're gonna get a full contraction. If you don't get that, the next place to put those, I'm gonna move your leg really quick, 
is gonna be up behind the leg on the knee. There's a perineal nerve. We can fire that there. We're not gonna do that today, but there is options if you do have one and you're not quite seeing the results you want. We do free unlimited coaching calls, so definitely reach out to us and we'll make sure you guys get covered. So when we turn this on, especially the first time, this device, all we need to do to turn it on is spin these dials. And then we have an intensity at the top. This is gonna go up to nine, so 9.0. You go as high as you can without fighting it. So if you feel like you're resisting, we're gonna turn it down, all right? We're gonna start with the calf, because like I said, it can be harder to activate. They are color-coded, so that's black. Black into the device. All I do is spin this clockwise and we start going up. I'm at about a one, 1 1.1. You might start feeling a light flicking. What we wanna do is get to the point where we're physically moving the muscle. There we go. You can start, kind of see it start moving there. It's moving the whole leg. That muscle contraction is what we're looking for. Because every time we contract the muscle, we squeeze blood vessels. And as we squeeze them, they relax. It's called vasodilation, so they get slightly bigger. That means more volume of blood. We want more volume of blood. That's oxygen nutrients. Also, as we pump it, we push it through capillaries, which feeds more oxygen nutrients to more muscle fibers, better repair. On top of that, inside that muscle is lymphatic vessels. Those trap waste. There's no lymphatic heart to drive that, so we have to contract the muscle around it to squeeze all that waste out. So we're doing good stuff in, bad stuff out, twice a second for as long as we leave the machine on. Do the same thing up here. We're gonna turn these up. You'll start seeing these bounce around. Boom. So now we have a full leg contraction. Basically right now, twice a second, we're squeezing muscles, the main muscles in that area, getting more blood flow in. We're slowly relaxing those vessels and then we're getting waste out. Normally I would do this for 15, 20 minutes if you're coming off a workout because your body's still warm. If you wait till later at night, we probably wanna do 30 minutes to an hour, sit in front of TV, some people play video games if you're into that, uh, read a book, whatever it is, give it time to do its magic. Now the next setup we're gonna work on is arms. Obviously in softball, baseball, whatever sport it is you're playing, if it's an overhand sport, you're using your, your elbow and your shoulder a ton. So we are a muscle stim, we're not gonna go right on the elbow, but we wanna go above and below the elbow and above and below the shoulder for the most effect through those low vascular areas. So first place, we're gonna put one right down here on the flexor. So this is actually gonna affect grip strength. It's gonna mostly overlay our ulnar nerve, which is gonna start firing these fingers here. On the same channel, we're gonna put the next one up into the bicep tendon. Putting on that bicep tendon is gonna actually fire the bicep and the tricep underneath. We're gonna get this nice big contraction that's moving a ton of fluid. Now we're gonna focus on the shoulder. So we go on the outside of the deltoid, Occasionally, if you get tighter towards the front or towards the back, we can shift the pad there, but by putting it in the middle, we fire the whole delt. Next one goes up into the trap. Work around that. Boom. All right, so setup looks really simple. We're going to move some wires out of the way so you're not worried about them. When we turn this on, her hand's going to start physically moving. Her shoulder's going to start physically moving, and that physical movement is necessary to move fluid. So we'll start with the lower part. We'll start feeling that flicking about now. We start watching the finger dance. There we go, hijacked her arm. Next up, shoulder. There we go, shoulder's moving. Got a little muscle definition going on the delt there. So right now, as you can tell, the shoulder, which is this side, is at four and a half, and the bottom is at 2.8. This is our intensity, and this is normal for the shoulder to take a little bit more intensity because it's a bigger muscle. So we could probably go to nine on both and your arm would be flopping around, but this and the arm in particular, we don't wanna go so high that we're fighting it because then we'll start fatiguing things and that is the opposite of recovery. So we'll pop that guy down. Easy. All right, now we get to do low back. All right, so last pad place we're gonna work on today is low back. Obviously anytime we're throwing, we have hip function in there and that pivot is gonna put a ton of torque on our low back here. So most specifically, people will start feeling pain on either side so my pad placements, once again, muscle stimulator. We're gonna go here on the bottom of the erector. So we have these, on either side of the spine, we have these large erectors that are actually stabilizing the core. Our next one is gonna go a little bit lower. You're gonna see the pad disappear right below the, the line. That's gonna be right at the top of the glute. If you notice, my channel is in a cross pattern. It's a little bit technical. There's an electromagnetic field, there's other things, but no matter how you set this up, you're gonna get a benefit. I just have a little bit of a tweak to, uh, to my style. This so next one's gonna go on the opposite side of the erector. And then once again, slip down below the belt line, pop it in there. So we have a nice square set up on the back. When we, when we put this on, for the demo, she's gonna be standing, but normally I want you seated, laying down, nice comfortable position, because we don't want anything in tension. But all we're gonna do here, now that these are in a cross pattern and not on muscle groups, we're gonna turn these on and spin them up together. So as we go up, you might not physically see a ton, but we can start seeing it moving your whole upper body. 
This is why we normally have you seated, but for demonstration purposes, you can kind of see where you're Low back in particular, <clears throat> we would probably be one of the longer sessions that you would do. These, these muscles take so much tension from mid-back, hamstrings, glutes, that we want to make sure these are super relaxed. And oftentimes, I'll couple a session of this with a hamstring or a glute or a mid-back session so that we're not releasing these and then the tension in either side of it pulls it right back. Hey, that's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in. Mark Pro, go ahead and get yourself one. I'll throw Sierra's link in the description below of the YouTube yeah, video. Hey, best recovery tool out there on the market. Really appreciate you, Tim, coming through. Hey, you know the shtick. I pump out two of these YouTube videos per week, so do me a favor and subscribe for me. I appreciate you. Catch you next week. Game Rewards are grinded. It knows how much you've invested.